Hey, what's up, YouTubers? It's JDreamers. Now, I wanted to make a response video because I had done a previous video talking about um, how NASA paints gravity all wrong. And um, I wanted to go a little bit more into detail about that because I've had a few comments where people are asking me things like, you know, why are you asking questions? Why don't you, why don't you go into the scientific community and find out the answers? You know, why don't you ask professors and people who are educated or go to the NASA website and find out what the answers are to, to your questions about the way that the universe or the way that our, our solar system has been drawn out. Now, in my previous video, I had basically mentioned that I noticed, for example, when you look at an atom or the given picture of an atom you have the nucleus and then the electrons are flying all around you know that they they don't fly in a flat plane around the nucleus and then I looked at a picture of the earth with the tens of thousands uh, you know there's like 10 to 20 thousand satellites and debris all going around our planet at once and um, when I look up pictures of this, even if they're, you know, conceptual, it, it doesn't show all of the satellites making a nice little ring around Earth so that Earth has an artificial ring around it. They're going everywhere. They're orbiting at all kinds of various orbits all around the Earth, supposedly because of gravity. So I pointed this out and I said, well, if, if the satellites do that and supposedly the electrons do that, you know, going at these random chaotic orbits around the center, then why doesn't the rest of the universe follow suit as depicted by NASA? I wonder why is it that our solar system, when we look at pictures, it's always shown as being all these objects on a flat plane going around a central object. And then when I look at the pictures of Saturn, it always shows all this ice or debris or whatever going on around a flat plane around the planet. Or when I look at the asteroid belt, I mean the asteroid belt is just totally, they're all following and marching in a perfect circle around the sun, which blows my mind because, you know, the, the main theory about the asteroid belt is that, you know, one heavenly body smashed into another heavenly body and then all the little bits and pieces formed a nice neat line and marched around the sun. Doesn't that sound ridiculous? It does to me. Anyways, and then I look at the Milky Way galaxy itself. These spiral galaxies. So many of these galaxies are all flat. And I thought to myself, maybe they're just rubbing the flat earth in our face. Maybe they're rubbing this in our face that our home and our world and our universe is actually flat. Either that or when they all start drawing it, um, their subconscious is telling them to draw the truth, even though they try to draw lies. So there have been some people who have um, responded and tried to give me the scientific reasons. Well, I'm going to, somebody gave me a video to watch. And I'm not going to put the video on here because I'm having copyright issues and all that. But I'm going to quote the scientist in the video and what he said explaining why all these things are flat in our universe, especially when it comes to the formation of our solar system. So the scientist says, if the original gas cloud that formed the solar system had not been rotating at all, it would have indulged in a spherical gravitational collapse towards a point. However, in general, any large glass, uh, any large gas cloud in space will have rotation. Thus, it will have angular momentum. And then I can't quote the rest, you know, the rest of it because he starts giving out like a formula for that, which is beyond me. It's in the scientific theoretical world. Um, but then he goes on to say, thus, by the product of two forces, rotation and collapse, gas clouds turn into a cylindrical or disc-like shape.
That's the whole quote. So I'm going to break it down for you real quick in JDreamer's terms. I'm going to simplify it, basically. This is what I hear. He says, if the original gas cloud that formed the solar system, let's stop. So he's saying that our solar system, as presented to us, right, was originally a gas cloud. Now, I remember that space is this nearly infinite grand vacuum. And some people have told me, well, it's not a perfect vacuum, but still, it's a humongous vacuum. It's nearly perfect and nearly infinite compared to the tiny little dots that happen to be here and there in between it. But anyways, regardless, many of us will agree that it is a very powerful vacuum. Space, right? So, he's saying if the original gas cloud that formed the solar system, now let's imagine that we have a gas cloud right here, and all around it is space. So when I let go of this gas cloud right now, what's going to happen? It's going to expand. It's in a vacuum. That's exactly what happens in a vacuum. All of the gas will shoot off and expand. Um, if you want a really simple video to get a, a good grasp of this, just Google um, what happens to a balloon in a, in a vacuum. And you'll see that uninflated balloons will start to inflate because the molecules inside are being pulled in every direction. So he says if the original gas cloud that formed the solar system, well, I'm already saying that doesn't sound right to me because there wouldn't be clouds in space. You see what I mean? There wouldn't be clouds just drifting along in this powerful vacuum. They would be torn apart. There would be no such things as clouds in space. To me, this sounds like this sounds like fantasy. It sounds like a bedtime story. But let's go on. He says if the original gas cloud that formed in the solar system had not been rotating at all, it would have indulged in a spherical gravitational collapse towards a point. Now let me sum the rest of that up, all right? He says, if it had not been rotating, basically everything in our solar system whoosh, would be one giant solid object, and you would, be not, you would not be here, and I would not be here. We'd all be dead. So he's giving us two options to go off of. He's saying, one, either we would all be dead, or two, it must have been spinning. Well, any rational thinking person using reason and logic is going to look around and go, well, I'm not dead, and I know everything isn't one giant ball. At least that's what we've been presented. So I guess we must be spinning right so i already i already have a problem with that the whole spinning gas cloud in space because first of all if it's spinning right it's going to be pulling itself naturally outward on top of the vacuum of space pulling it and ripping it apart anyways so now we're adding spinning to it but listen to how they fix the problem they say They say, uh, I'm catching up on it right here. It says, um, if the original gas cloud that formed in the solar system had not been rotating at all, it would have indulged in a spherical gravitational collapse towards a point. What that is, is he's now creating a force. He's now creating something to keep everything from flying apart. What he's creating is gravity. The concept of a force that's pulling everything towards the middle to balance out the ripping apart from the spinning and from the infinite vacuum of space. So now he just created gravity in order to counter that so that it makes sense to him. So he goes on to say, however, in general, any large gas cloud in space will have rotation. So he's saying it, it has to, otherwise we would all be squished, right? Because I created the force of gravity and everything must go towards gravity. Well, the only thing to keep everything from collapsing in on itself is something pulling it outward at the same time, which is 
this angular momentum, a.k.a. this spinning motion. So he's invented the spin and he's invented gravity to keep everything um, from flying apart. <laughs> so he, he ends by saying, thus by the product of two forces, rotation and collapse, a.k.a. gravity, Gas clouds turn into a cylindrical or disc shape, disc like shape. So let's just say, let's just spitball, let's say that he was right. Let's just say that all that is true, even though it sounds like a bedtime story. Let's say that we had some sort of force that was pulling in, and so we also had some sort of force that was rotating in order to pull it back out to keep it even. Well, he admits that if that was true, the end result is a flat plane. And so this is how he describes why NASA draws our solar system as all the planets circling on a flat disk or the rings of Saturn all circling on a flat disk or our galaxy looking like a flat disk. This is how he's explaining this. Let's take that same logic and apply it to early earth right what i was taught about how earth was formed was a long time ago little pieces got together due to gravity right and um i guess they were spinning or what have you in space but they became really hot and at some point in time early earth was molten earth so now if we apply his logic of the angular momentum and it's spinning so much that it starts to pull apart like pizza dough when you throw it into the air and spin it well by his own admission the earth should still be flat anyways that's all i got for you guys thanks for coming with me into this uh space adventure and um i'd love to hear what you guys think about the topic Thanks for leaving me your comments and thanks for watching.